Hello, I'm Dr. Matluguji, and today I'm going to show you how to install PostGRE SQL and do some basic operations on database using PG Admin, uh, such as making a new database, uh, importing some data into a database, and doing a basic uh, SQL query. So let's have a look. Uh, so head to this website, postgresql.org, and then go to the download link. And then depending on your platform, I'm on Windows, I'm going to be choosing Windows. And then I'm going to do an interactive installer download by EDB. Go to download the installer. And then again, depending on your platform, I don't recommend installing beta version. Uh, probably you can go for 12.4 version. For Windows, I've got x86-64. So download this one. Okay. When your download finish, click on the installation file. A security window pops up. Uh, you give, you say yes. I'm verifying the installation, and then you wait for installation pop up to come up. Um, it's coming up. Yeah, here we go. Um, welcome to Post GRSQL Setup Wizard. You go next. So it's gonna install Post GRSQL Server database server itself. And to connect to the database server, server you're gonna be using PG Admin 4. And Stack Builder is a software which manages other components on the top of uh, your Postgres. And then the command line tool, you might need it uh, to do some restoring the database, taking backup, stuff like that. Uh, click Next, yeah, because I've previously installed it, uh, it's saying it's, it got a directory there and it's using this configuration. Uh, this port, I'm going to override it. So this is a very important information. You need to know the directory where it's going to install it. And then you need the port, database port that is uh, it's going to be using. And very important, you need to know the database super user, which is the administrator of your database. So it's called Postgres, P-O-S-T-G-R-E-S. -E uh, you need to remember that. So whenever you've been asked to enter the super user or database user, you're gonna use this. And then you will set the password for this user very soon. Okay, it's saying because I've already got a PG admin server running. Okay, I'll say, okay, yes. Now we gotta wait. Okay, now we got this, um, uh, completing the post GRESK setup wizard, uh, you can, it's up to you, but I recommend you can tick off Stack Builder, maybe use to download and install additional tools, drivers, blah, 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 blah. You can just tick this off and then just finish. And then it's gonna ask to restart your computer. Uh, you can say yes or no, depending on your preferences, but I recommend that you restart the computer so that your all services up and running. So we'll see you in a moment when I'm back. Okay, so, so after you would have restarted your computer, you can look for PG Admin 4. When you click on this, it's gonna open up in your web browser, is a web-based application which connects to Postgres server and then let you do all the database-related tasks in there. So click on the servers, it's gonna show up all the servers that's been installed there. When you open up the PG admin for the first time, it's gonna ask you the password because I've installed this before, it didn't ask me this time. But when you open it up for the first time, it can ask you the password, you set the password. And also when you click on the Postgres database server, it will ask you the database password which you would have set during the installation process. So here you can see all the databases, the logins are, are, are Another important thing that you, that you need to know when we will talk about the database securities, we'll be talking a lot about these logins, how they operate in the database environment. Uh, so now I'll show you how you can create a new database. So you right click on this database object, click create, and then database, you give a new name to the database. I'm gonna call it UniDB. Um, you can do a lot of things here, set the definition. You can see what sort of SQL is gonna generate. So for now, I just put the database name, make Postgres is owner, and then just save it. So it has uh, now 
created a new database which I'm calling UniDB, and then it has its own public schema in there. But what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be uh, creating a query tool for this one, and then I'll open up a SQL file that I've saved in my download. So you will have a link. Uh, in the description to download this file. So this is a schema. It has all the tables and all the constraints, the permissions and the, and the dummy data to play with. So click on this one, select, and it's gonna open up all the code. You just open execute or F5. It executes very efficiently within a second and it has generated all the objects that we need. Uh, to do our uh, experiment and practices. So now if I refresh this UniDB uh, from here, so now we can see there's another uh, schema called UniDB. I can expand this UniDB and then I can have a look all the tables in there. So if I wanna look the data inside any of this table, I can right click, go to view, Add data and then all rows. It opens up a new SQL um, window where it writes the SQL for me and then it shows all the data in there. Right. Um, let's have a look another one. Uh, before we do that, okay, let's if we if we expand any of the table, we can have a look what sort of fields it has um, and what type of constraint this table has been given. Or you can look up the same information if you right click on the table, go to the properties, you can look at uh, all the columns that's been uh, set for this table. Uh, you can add more columns there, and you can set their data types, and you know, if you want to make a primary or not primary to any one of these fields. So, um, you can have a look constraint because we set uh, the student ID as uh, as a primary key, so primary key gotta be not null, it can't be duplicated, so there's a, it automatically creates a constraint on this field. Yeah, okay, I haven't changed anything, so I just hit the cancel. Um, and then we can link these tables to each other. Um, let's have a look at another table. Uh, transcript, go to view all rows, and it shows us all the rows in this uh, uh, transcript table, and we can see the students' tables being, li being linked with this uh, transcript table via student ID, and then we have a unit of study code, and then the semester, year, and grade. Uh, let's try changing any data. If I double click on any of the field here, I can change the data. Let's say uh, I change it to 2010 to 2020, enter, but it shows in a bold, that means the data has been ch uh, changed, but it hasn't been saved yet. So if I wanna make this these changes permanent, I'll go and hit this button, save data changes. If I do that, these changes will be saved depending on, depending on if I'm allowed to do this. Okay, so if I click this uh, because um, I got an error, it's saying the insert or update table transcript violates the foreign key constraint because there's a foreign key that's been set on this one, which we can see um, on the table here. Uh, so that's why it's not letting me do that because it's been referring to the general study offering. So this basically, that means this, column is being linked with the uh, unit of study offering this table here. Yeah, it's coming from here. So now that means I can't change this data. But if I wanna discard these changes, I can run this query again. It's gonna say that, okay, you have done some, done some changes and you haven't um, saved it. You wanna discard these changes? I can say, okay, yes. Okay, it loaded that thing again. Uh, so same thing, if I change anything here, same story, if I save it, it's not gonna let me save because it reflects back to, it violates the constraint that we set on this table. So we'll talk about these constraints and how to set, it up, set them up appropriately and uh, what's the benefit of setting these constraints or these details gonna come up um, in the forthcoming videos. Thank you very much for listening and stay tuned. Bye.